And if we finish early, we finish early. If we don't, we don't. And if you have questions or anything, Ashley, um, make sure to stop me and uh, I'll answer questions for you, uh, you know, as we go. We can be really laid back about this. I want to make sure our, we're recording. We are, so that's good. And you should be able to see my screen. Can you see that, Ashley? Can you see the while you're waiting screen? Yes. Okay, awesome. All right, so here we go. Um, we've had a survey the past couple of weeks that we've asked everybody to fill in. So if you haven't had a chance to do that, we'd appreciate it. We're excited to have you here tonight. And that is not the right link for the slides, but I will get the right slide, the right link up for you in a second. Um, so this is the link to the slides tonight. They're also in our Google Classroom. If you go to bit.ly slash tech talk for slides, you should get um, a copy of these slides. It's actually the, the file of these slides and you can follow along as I'm going along or, and click on things or you can um, access them later. Tonight, we're gonna to be talking about curating digital resources. We're gonna talk a little bit about Google Drive, about some tools for organizing your stuff, and then if we have time, like what are the great places to go and find lessons and other digital resources that you can save and organize for um, using in the classroom. So we wanna thank Rio Salado for putting this together tonight. Um, and Maricopa Community Colleges, thank you very much. Um, if you wanna know more about, sorry, my, Nose is really bothering me. Ah, oh, not in the middle of a webinar. Um, if you want to know more about our series, you can go to bit.ly slash tech talks with Lucy and see our whole schedule. Um, we have a Google Classroom where all of the resources are located and you can always look at them after uh, the webinar. And I will also put the recording of this up in our Google Classroom uh, within a couple days of this recording. Uh, Ashley, are you in our Google Classroom? Have you seen the resources in there by chance? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Uh, for any of you who are new, this is the code. You go to classroom.google.com and in the upper right hand corner, there's a plus sign. You click on that and select join classroom and you mm -hmm. put the code in and you'll be in there. So um, you need to use, make sure that you use a, um, your own personal Gmail address. It will not work with a school one. Uh, because the administrator of Google stuff on your end needs to enable something for that to happen, and it's a pain. So the easiest thing to do to get around it and to get into our Google Classroom is to go to is you to use your own personal Gmail address. And if you don't have one, I suggest that you make one. It's nice to have one for your own personal um, use. So classroom.google.com. And then this is the code that you put in to join. And everything that we've been doing the last couple of weeks will be in there. Um, and you can browse and click and do whatever you want in there. It, feel, free, feel free to experiment. We're using a platform called Zoom tonight. And if you have any questions or anything, you can interrupt me. Or I have um, this open on my iPad. And you can, um, I can see the chat. So if you want to type something in, um, you can always do that too. Feel free to invite others into here. This is not uh, just for Rio Salado people. It's open to the public. So if you know anybody who might be interested in our series, they're always welcome to join us and you can give out the link as you see fit. About me, I think I've said this three times in our past web uh, webinars, so I feel like I'm being redundant here, but I'm a former classroom teacher turned consultant and I work with schools and companies to help them be more innovative. I also run an online global ed conference that takes place every fall and do 5 million other things. And my role here is to be your personal tech coach. If you have questions or need resources or whatever, I'm available whenever you need me um, by appointment or I usually come in a little bit early to these webinars uh, for informal conversation or you can email me anytime. So uh, I'm based in Chicago, I'm not in Arizona and uh, that's a little bit about me. So uh, we've been using uh, the past couple of weeks a tool called Padlet um, to, and Ashley, would you mind muting? Because I can hear you, you typing. And then, and if you need to talk, then you can unmute the mic. That would be great. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's a noisy platform unless we mute and unmute all the time. So um, we've been using something called Padlet, which is a sticky note tool for doing different things. And we had people um, introduce themselves on this particular Padlet uh, uh, at the first meeting that we had and people have been adding to it with each uh, meeting that we've had. And then last week, uh, or actually two weeks ago, we, uh, I asked everybody as an icebreaker to tell us what their favorite use of technology was. So if you're interested in, in, in doing those icebreakers on your own, feel free to do that. Um, I just put them in here in case we had anybody new. So last week we talked about uh, Google Docs, Sheets, Forms, and add-ons. And I really want to get to the meat of our stuff. And since we have such a small group this tonight, I'm going to skip this. But at the end, we can go over anything that you may not know about these. Um, but I really want to get to the heart of curating tonight. Um, so I'm going to skip this since we're just an audience of two. Um, we're going to talk about uh, ISTE standards. We're going to talk about your current workflow. Um, talk about some curation options and some tools where, or some websites where you can find cool educational materials. Um, ISTE is the International Society for Technology and Education, and they have set standards for students, for educators, for administrators, tech coaches, computer science teachers. They have a different set for each group. And um, the ones that I think we should be concerned about are the ones for students that we're making sure that we're covering um, what needs to be, co it's not actually covering, it's, it's developing skills and mindsets in kids where we're being cognizant of that as teachers uh, with our students, but also be aware of what, what's expected of teachers these days. The, the world has really changed in terms of how, of how teachers interact with the technology in their classrooms. It's not optional really anymore. Um, and these standards are really kind of good guidelines so that to know, make sure that we know if we're up to speed or not. Um, the standards that we're going to be working on tonight really have to do with the learner standard. Um, you guys are here to pursue professional interests by creating and actively participating in, an, in a learning network here. And you are also seeking out opportunities to uh, improve your student teaching by looking at new digital resources and tools for learning and we're also collaborating with colleagues here to improve our practice and discover new resources and that sort of thing so these are the standards that we're focusing on there's there's three other ones with other indicators but these are the ones I think are most relevant for our practice tonight so again our slides um, are in Google slides and they should be publicly available if they're not let me know in the chat and uh, they're available at bit.ly slash tech talk for slides. And they're also in our Google Classroom. And I wanted to kind of um, start off by asking, and since, and Ashley, I'm gonna put you on the spot and you can unmute for this. How do you save stuff that you need for your classes that you teach or that you take? Do you have any kind of workflow or, or organizational schema for how you organize your stuff? No, it's all saved on the desktop. Ah, okay. And that, I think that can slow down your computer too. And if you saw my desktop right now, you'd see one folder, but inside that folder, you'd see like 5 million other folders because <laughs> I'm trying to be, I try to pretend that they're not there, but it's really easy to save all your stuff to your computer all the time. It's just there. And, and, and then actually what happens if something happens to your computer? What happens to that stuff? Oh, it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. And that's like every person's nightmare. And, um, and, and the older you'll find actually too, the older you get, the more stuff you have and like, and you, and you'll think of something you're like, I want that. I, where did I put it? It's almost like it would, you know, trying to find something in your house. Um, you have so much stuff on your, in your computer that it's hard to find. So tonight we're going to talk a little bit about how to organize that stuff a little bit better. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. This sounds like something I could benefit from. Okay. So are you, Ashley, are you um, studying to be a teacher through Rio Salado? Yes, I'm in the teacher in residence program and I'm going to be teaching first grade oh. in July. But I was teaching at a charter school in high school and middle school. And then I taught as a TA at ASU before that. Oh, so you've been like, you've been, you're, you totally know what you're doing. You're just uh. an official, right? There's always room for improvement. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, that's that's wonderful. Well, we're glad to have you here tonight. And jump in here anytime and um, let me know your thoughts. 
Are there any particular pain points with organizing your digital resources other than just keeping them on your desktop? Is there anything else that you find difficult or annoying? Yes, I find it difficult to have a centralized, organized system. Okay. I find it hard to find things when I need them. And I find it hard to organize. So just think back to the high school kids you worked with. You know, I bet they're in the same boat. Like this is, you know, teaching some organizational skills. Like, like we give kids time to like sort out their lockers, right? At the end of the school year or once a week or whatever. Like we know that's a really crucial skill for like middle school particularly. Mm -hmm. um, and we know that kids need that time or else it'll be a disaster area. And just with us, and just, and so also with their digital resources, they're the same way too. They're probably worse than we are. And, and teaching some, some specific strategies um, is really important. Um, and so if you're doing it yourself, then you can kind of translate it for the kids. With little people, you're gonna find that um, first grade is an amazing year because I, I taught first grade for a number of years. They go from being able to do very little to uh, being incredibly independent and they can do amazing stuff. I've seen first graders on iPads with Google Sheets, uh, you know, answering questions from their teacher as she read a book aloud. You know, I've, you know it's a matter of training and mm -hmm. setting routines with first grade and, um, and, and, and kind of organizing things really simply for them. And okay. they, can, they can do it, but you just have to think about what are the routines I need to teach. And I think mm -hmm. like the, the first part of your, like the first month of school is going to be all about routines, whether it's where to put their backpack to whatever you're doing, you know, instructionally. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I think this will be really helpful to you tonight. Okay. Um, and I have a big typo in here. So um, that, ha that happens when you're tired and don't see things. Um, so today's teachers really have a different skill set than what they've had to have in the past. And I, I feel like there are three C's that teachers need to be able to do. Consume content, we're all good at that. That's easy to do. You know, watch videos, uh, read stuff online. Uh, we're, I think most people are pretty avid consumers of that. But you also have to be able to curate, which means choose selectively of things that you are going to be the most beneficial to you. And also that requires some media literacy skills about what's what's quality and what's not quality. And then um, and then teachers also have to be able to be able to create content to a certain extent. And that's a little bit more sophisticated and we're going to be covering later in these webinars, like with YouTube and that sort of thing. Uh, but these are kind of the three C's I think are really important. Uh, the kinds of things that teachers are having to organize are links to websites, articles, documents, photos, records, spreadsheets, videos. Anything else do you think, Ashley, that teachers might need to organize digitally? I was brainstorming a list. I couldn't think of anything else. Well, for me, I'm looking at records and I'm thinking of student grades. Mm. Grades. So I'm gonna. Uh, so I'll add that to our list here. Um, um, grades, student, um, student work. Yes. Portfolios, maybe something like that. Also, what about emails? Email. Yeah, there's tons of stuff. Oh my gosh, it just goes on and on. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. Um, so there's so much stuff that you have to be able to get together. Um, and hopefully this will help you. Uh, I think last week was also helpful to people too, because we talked a lot about Google Docs and Sheets. Mm -hmm. um, and we can review that a little bit here, but let me give you an overview of Drive, which is really the heart of Google Apps. Uh, Google applications are now called Google Suite for Education or G Suite for Education. And it is a core set of digital tools that they've developed over a number of years um, that are kind of tied to Google Drive, is, I guess is how I would put it. And so when you're looking at, um, let me get my pointer on here. When you're looking at um, Google Drive, which is usually drive.google.com, you're gonna see something that looks like this. This is an account of mine that I don't have a lot of stuff in, um, and because I thought it was easier for, you to, for people to see. And your ID will be, your, your account will be in the right-hand corner, if you have alerts for any reason, they'll be where that little bell is. And then that waffle, um, that nine little, those nine little squares lead you to other Google apps. Um, and then you can, you can get help with the question mark and, and the, the 
little wheel thing is usually some settings that you can adjust. Um, there's an Omni box at the top of Google Drive, and that's a search box, and we'll talk about that in a little while. There's a new button, and I'll talk about that a little bit more. And then going down underneath the new button, you'll see my drive, things that are shared with me, things I've worked on recently, things I've starred, things that are in the trash. So that's a left-hand navigation. And then recent stuff pops up at the top, and then you'll see everything else, kind of like, I don't know, like your Facebook feed a little bit. You'll see um, the names of your files in the middle, and you can sort them by name, by who owns it, by the time it was last modified, and the file size, by just clicking on those labels at the top of each column. So this is what Google Drive looks like. Um, you can make new things in Google Drive. And so this is, this is I think, the first thing I would do as a teacher is I would make a folder for you know, each unit, I would make a folder for administrative documents, I'd make a folder for, I'd make a lot of folders. Um, so you can make folders um, and you can upload existing files. So if you have lots of PDFs or Word documents or photos, any kind of file you can upload to Google Drive. And there are special add-ons that will let you open them up in Google Drive too. You may not be able to edit them, it depends on the file. Um, but like you can convert Word documents to Google Docs. You can convert uh, um, Microsoft uh, spreadsheets, whatever they're called, Excel sheets to um, Google Sheets and things like that. Uh, and they'll be more interactive and they'll be shareable in the cloud. And when I talk about the cloud, that means in the internet. Instead of keeping stuff on your computer, you know, on your hard drive or on your desktop and, and, and risking maybe losing it, you can put stuff up into the internet, into the cloud, and, and save it there so that you can access it from any computer anytime and not worry about it being deleted um, or your computer crashing and not being able to get to things. So anyway, this new button over here lets you do a new folder, upload stuff, um, create new docs, sheets, and slides. And I use that mostly. I don't use uh, Microsoft Word and all that. They, Microsoft has a, a similar um, online suite now called uh, 365, I believe. Microsoft, 3, Microsoft 365. So it's similar to this, but I think I, I, I'm personally uh, more into Google. And I think it will depend on your school. Some school, most schools are probably Google, um, but Microsoft 365 is, is popular in some places. Uh, and, and, and it operates similar to this. Um, so I do, I, I put everything in the cloud here with either, I, you know, I, today I wrote a cover letter for a potential job and I wrote it in Google Docs. And then um, I actually put it into another format afterwards. I put it into a PDF to send it to the, the people I needed to send it to. So you can convert these files into different formats that you need to use in different platforms, by the way. So that's the new button. And then um, I've created a folder in here. You can see that it says Lucy's new folder in the screenshot. And if I have any other files in here, that are not in a folder, I can drag them into that folder. Just drag and drop right on the, on the website. And you can, you can put folders in folders and just every, like you would normally on your hard drive of your computer. So um, the way that you see these things is you need to make sure this little triangle is facing down so the contents in your drive are visible on the left-hand side. So you can drag and drop anything in Google Drive in organizing it. Now, this is what it looks like inside a folder when you've created a folder, and you have some options here. You can rename it, you can star it, you can change the color, you can search within it. Um, you can give a link to someone to, to share that folder with them. So you could put together like a set of work for your, your students and then give them the link to it so that they can access it. Um, with little kids, you can't give them a really long link, and that's another story. Um, we can talk about that when, uh, when, we, when I take some questions in a minute. Um, you can also move uh, stuff from folders to folders in here. So every folder, uh, when you click on it, has a little triangle and it gives you these options uh, within your folder in order if, in, if you need to customize things. Um, with that Omni box at the top, there um, you can search by. Um, by the kind of file. 
So if I'm looking for photos, I can sort everything out just by, by photos and a keyword. Um, and the way that you access that is you can, you can type anything, any keyword, and it will search any text in your, in your documents uh, right in that Omnibox. But if you want to get to these search tools here, the little triangle um, right here is where you need to go for that. So the, Google is great. Every product that Google makes has some sort of search capability for the most part. Uh, for instance, Gmail has this, uh, Google Docs, you know, has it itself. Um, uh, I'm trying to think what else has it. It's built into that, you know, search is what Google does. And I don't delete my email because I search it now. I, I know how to organize it. I have it in folders and filters and all sorts of things. And the same thing with Google Drive. I don't typically de delete a lot of stuff because it takes too much time and I have too much stuff but I can find things if I need to by searching, um, by keywords or by anything that's in that document. It's, it's really brilliant. So you can also um, launch some advanced preferences with this too. I can search for any Google Docs that are owned by a specific person or shared with me or are in the trash. There are a lot of different settings here and you can you can customize if you're, if you're having a hard time finding something in particular. So with Google Drive, um, this is like the heart of your organizational system if you're using Google tools. And, and here are some suggestions I have for kind of making the most of this. You need to name your files something that you can remember. <laughs> um, and, and you might want to include some keywords and you might want to also, um, you know, like today I might, today I saved a resume. So Lucy Gray underscore May 2018 underscore resume. So when I'm searching in, if I can't find that document some, at some point for whatever reason, I can search my drive for my name or for resume and it's going to come up pretty easily. So names, you know, keep your names of your documents relevant and descriptive of what it, the file is. Um, I would also make folders in advance of needing them. So as you prepare for the school year, think about, oh, I need to put, I need a math folder and a social studies folder and a language arts folder, and then you can file stuff away as you need to. I tend to name my files also by, and I can show you my drive in a second, um, my real drive, um, by, I put the school year ahead of it or the year so I can find it too, and I can sort it by year. So I'll do 2018 Rio Salado webinars or something like that. And it makes things easier to find too and to sort when I've done that. Um, and I'll show you how to search a little bit more. You can upload things that you don't want to lose, uh, including photos, PDFs, Word documents. I already mentioned that. And if you think you're going to run out of room, which typically the, Google gives you a lot of room for free, you can buy more. I have like a terabyte of data because I have a lot of stuff. Um, and I think I pay 10 bucks a month and it's worth every penny to do that. And then the last thing I want to say is uh, if, you, if you're surfing the web and you find something, there is an extension that you can use with uh, Google Chrome that will let you save stuff on the fly to Google Drive. So let me show you, let me break out of here for a second and show you what this looks like. So, um, so I'm going to go to drive.google.com. This is uh, for my main uh, Google account, I believe. Let me see. Yep, it is. And you can see that there's the search box up here. Oops, where's it going? Come back. It's making me sign in, I think. Um, no, I think I'm okay. So I can search for all these different things here. And that's been acting a little funky for me today. I don't know why it's getting kind of stuck. Maybe it's my internet. Um, these are things I've worked on recently. Um, if you want to see what, where I'm logged in, you can click on computers under drive you'll see all my folders and I have a lot of folders and you can see how I've organized them by year and their title so I can find stuff so there's my tax information these are typically I, I'm a consultant so these are a lot of my clients or events that I'm running um, you can also change the color of folders which helps if you look if you're looking for something or if you want to color code things which might be good for sub subject areas. So you just click on a folder um, and you click on 
the little arrow there and you can change the color uh, to whatever you want um, and that makes it a little bit more visible. You can also share this stuff with people. When you see this little icon that looks like a person, you can give them a link to that folder. You can um, put an email address in here and send them a notification that it's being shared with them. And you can make things you know, public on the web or private or just shared with a couple people. So sharing in Google Drive is really, really important. And you can always remove those permissions. If you've shared a document and you're the owner of something, you can always, um, always take back the permissions if you need to. So that's a little bit about uh, Google Drive. The other thing I wanted to make sure that you, that you saw is that you can grab a file and move it to a different folder if you need to. I don't want to do that right now, but you can um, move stuff pretty easily like you would on a regular computer. Only this is in the cloud. So Ashley, do you have any questions about Google Drive so far? Are you familiar yeah. with it? Yes, I'm familiar with it up at a basic level. Nothing like what you can do. Uh, I have a document. I would like to start saving my documents instead of on the computer to the cloud. Yeah. Can you show me how I would take a Word document and sure. move it from my desktop to the cloud? You, can, you could drag and drop it up here, but I always do it this way. I go to New. And then it says file upload. And if you have a folder, you can select a folder. Like if you have a whole bunch of documents in a folder, you can do it there. But if you have an individual file, click on file upload, hmm. go to whatever document you have. I don't think I have a Word document here. Um, um, I have no idea what this is. I think, oh, this is a flight. This is an airplane ticket. So I'm going to pick this PDF here, click on open. Mm -hmm. And hopefully if my computer cooperates, it's just going to start uploading it. So you see in the lower right hand corner mm -hmm. how it's uploading it. It took two seconds to do it. Yeah. So um, there's a there's a, a magnifying glass here that says locate in my drive and it will mm -hmm. show me where it is. So mm -hmm. then I can take it and I can preview it. I can add somebody to it, mm -hmm. uh, get a link to it, but then I can also move it. So if I wanted to go into a specific folder, it's going into the folder what I, where I just was mm -hmm. instead of my main drive. And I don't want it to be there. I want it to be in my main drive, not in a folder. So I'm just going to go there, click on there, and move it. Mm -hmm. And it will give you a warning saying, you're sure you want to move this? And I do. So mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty simple. I mean, I could also probably, let's see if this will work. Um, if I take a document from my desktop and I go over here and I drop it in here and onto my drive icon does the same thing. That's very cool. So you can drag and drop. You don't even have to use that new button. That's awesome. Wow. Um, they, they, they add things all the time. They're always improving and they don't make a big announcement about it. You'll, you'll come into Google docs or drive and you'll say, Oh, that wasn't there before. Um, it's kind of cool it, to be surprised. Um, if you have problems, um, so here the eye icon here shows you when things have been edited and by other people too, by the way, which is kind of cool. Um, and then the plus sign has help in keyboard shortcuts in here. So every Google product has help documentation built in. So if you don't know how to do something, go to this help place, type in a couple keywords, and they also have, they have live chat and phone help now. That's new. Um, there's lots and lots of help. So let's say you want to know how to insert, um, you know, image into a doc. Um, well, that's not quite what I wanted. But let's just look at this. So insert, delete images or videos. So this is more, I'm not in a, in a Google Doc, so it's not going to, this help doesn't apply to that. This applies to Drive in particular. Um, anything else, Ashley, you need to know about Google Drive? No, that was a great overview, Lucy. Okay, thanks. Um, one other cool advanced thing that we talked about last week, um, each of these Google tools has something called add-ons. And it's like a little store of third-party things that add functionality to it. So Drive has it, Sheets has it, Slides has it, 
Docs has it, and they're all different, and they're all confusing. And they're confusing because there's also something called extensions, which I want to show you too really briefly. So um, the, 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 the add-ons for, for Drive are under New, and you go to More, and you can see I have a lot already installed. If we went all the way down to the bottom of my screen, which is hard to see because I have so many more, I have so many installed, you're going to see something that says connect more apps. And these are third party things. They're not necessarily developed by Google. And um, you can install them in your Google Drive and then use them as you need them. So um, I don't think I have SketchUp for school. So I'm going to connect to that. And it's connected to my um, Google Drive, and it will be the default app that will open up files of a certain type, probably some sort of SketchUp file. SketchUp's a drawing program. And then if I wanted to use any of those, I would go again to New, More, and SketchUp was probably down here, SketchUp for Schools. So I'm gonna click on that. And I haven't used this before, so I haven't used it in a long time, so we'll see what, what it does exactly. But it lets you do like 3D modeling and stuff. It used to be an architectural tool and then teachers started using it like crazy. And it looks like, there it goes, okay. So I can sign in with Google. I don't know if it's gonna let me do it because I'm not with a school account here, but we'll see. It's gonna ask permissions. Oh, I need to have, I need to use G Suite for education. This is not an education account. Let me show you a different one. Um, it's not going to let me get out of there. So another add-on that I find kind of fun is uh, video notes. And video, I, like, I, would, I don't know if I would use this with first graders. You might find some use for it, but I, I could see using it with, with middle school and on up. You can, it's like Google Docs and YouTube married. So you can put in the link to a, 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 a URL from a, a YouTube video and then people can watch it over here. And then you can take notes on this side and it, it's time stamped according to where you are in the video. It's really cool. And then you can share it with other people. Um, and it works, it's like, it's basically like a fancy Google Doc but it lets you embed a video in it and have the doc on the side. It's, it's awesome. And you can have multiple people in there. So like if I were a college professor, if I were teaching one of your graduate classes, I would, maybe I'd have you guys like a small group watch a video together and take notes at the same time and then report back or share it with the rest of the class or something like that for an assignment. So just be aware that those are there. And so these, there, there, there are tools in that um, add-on, I don't know what the, if it's called a store, I call it a store, but this area, there are some things here that may also help you be more organized as well. I'm trying to think here, but maybe under the productivity tool, you'll find some things that might, um, that might help you in that department. So experiment, um, and, and look through these things as you have time. Like here's one that's multi, this is kind of cool. This is multi-folder. This is assign, assign one containing folder for each of your files and folders, or more than one. So you could put a, the same file in more than one folder. That's interesting. Um, anyway, okay, so that's Google um, Drive, and I just wanted to make sure that we touched on that a little bit because uh, it's not always obvious to people how they can make, really use that. So now we're going to move into some other tools that you can use to get organized. Um, and I think they'll help you as a student in particular, in particular too. Um, and my first tip is don't save a lot to your computer. Try to get stuff up in the cloud in Google Drive or some other cloud-based tool. Uh, because if you lose something, you'll cry and it'll be a sad day. Um, I, I tend to, when I find good stuff that I might use in the future, I try to put it away and organize it or bookmark it and put it somewhere. So save stuff in folders or in some sort of, you know, curation workflow um, that you might, that you might refer to later. Uh, and so I'll show you how to do that. 
you might want to make collections of your stuff. So for instance, you can save um, like a, a series of videos in a collection called a playlist in YouTube, which I'm sure you probably have seen YouTube playlists, but basically they go from, they flow from one video to one video to one video. They're all kind of in a folder for lack of a better description. We're gonna spend more time on that in a future webinar, but that's a collection of stuff. So if you can like make a, let's say you made a playlist for you're doing a, um, a butterfly unit in first grade. What if you made a, a, a playlist of like, you know, five butterfly videos that you might use in a lesson down the road? If you start kind of curating stuff like that, you won't have to spend so much time on your lessons uh, when you go to, go to build them because you'll have the kind of the, the nuts and bolts saved. So when you find something good, be prepared to do something with it. That's kind of my advice there. Um, you need to learn how to search well. So I showed you how to search in, inside Google Drive. Some of the tools that I'm gonna show you also require search if you, if you need to find something. And using quotes around exact words that you wanna use or knowing keywords, and being persistent with your search is really important if you're, if you're using these kind of newfangled tools. Um, and then the tools I'm gonna to show you in a little bit, um, pick what works for you and experiment with them. And, and what works for me may not be, this, may not be the answer for you. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time. I have tons of stuff saved in different ways and it's overwhelming to a lot of people. If you're just starting out with curation, pick one tool that you think is kind of cool and, and, and see if it works and get your workflow going as opposed to, try, to trying five million things. Um, if the tool that you pick uh, allows you to tag something, which means adding a keyword to it, do it. So for instance, you might want to tag a, a YouTube video with the word butterfly so that you could find it easily through search. Tags really benefit search, and I'll show you, particularly in a tool called Digo, which I'm gonna show you, um, it's really, I think it's really helpful. Um, and then use Chrome extensions or bookmarklets that go with certain tools. Chrome extensions are these little tools that you add to your browser, and I'm gonna show you one in a second. And if you're using another browser like Safari or Microsoft Explorer or Firefox, they might be called, um, I think they're called something different in Firefox, but in, in Safari, they're called bookmarklets. And you can, they're like little Java applets that let you do certain things. So I'm using Chrome right now. I'm gonna get out of here for a second. And let's say I go to, um, I'm gonna go to my favorite education website, which is Edutopia. And I find an article uh, that I think is really useful that I want to save. I want to be able to read it later, or or use it in a paper, or there, you know, refer to it for some reason. There are a couple of different things I can do, and the one related to Google Drive. Th these are extensions that I've installed in the upper right hand corner, and I'll show you where to get them in a second. But there's one called Save to Drive. And it looks like the drive icon. So it's down here on the right hand side. If I mouse over it, you'll see a little sticky label. And it says save to Google Drive. So it's taking kind of a picture of this and it's putting it into my Google Drive. It's like magic. So I can rename it, I can close it, whatever. If I went to my Google Drive, I'll show you where it is. Here's my Google Drive. Let me get this out of the way. Uh, go to my drive. I want to do it by the last modified last Let's see sort everything by last modified Hmm Where'd it go? I know I saved it in there Let's say recent is it under recent. Oh Come on Let's try this again one more time. So we go to Save to drive It's uploading it to Google Drive. It, it really is a picture, it's a PNG file. There it is, ah, so I can change it here. Uh, it went into a folder, that's why. Why would it go into that folder, that's weird. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to type in rubric and see if it pops up.
This is bizarre. It is not showing up. It really does work. I think it went into, I thought it went into one of my Edmodo folders. Hang on. So much for that demo. Um, anyway, that's, you might want to try experimenting with that. If you find something, you could save it right to your Google Drive. And that's an example of uh, a Chrome extension. Chrome extensions are in the Chrome store. Um, uh, and I just Google Chrome store. It's, it's the website should be chrome.google.com slash web store. And there are all these different extensions that will add, um, that will add, that will add functionality to your Chrome browser. And there are 5 million of them. It's overwhelming. We talked about them two webinars ago. So you might want to take a look at that module in our Google Classroom. Um, one tool that's similar to one I'm going to talk about is, uh, for instance, is, is, Ever, is Microsoft OneNote. And it's very similar to Evernote, which I'm just going to show you. So just FYI. Um, I personally like extensions that let me do things that I couldn't do otherwise, like awesome screenshot lets me take screenshots. Um, um, this is a math one. Soundtrap lets you make music. There are, lot, there are lots of cool ones out there. Okay. So, um, so make sure that you try those extensions and usually most of the tools that I'm going to show you have an extension that goes with them. So what are your options for finding stuff when you're surfing and putting it somewhere where you're going to find and use it again? Google Drive and G Suite in general. Um, Google Photos, if you're worried about your photos, um, your Google account comes with a, a storage for photos and it's actually in your drive. And um, you can make it automatic with the app that goes on your phone. So like if you take a picture on your phone, Google Photos on my phone is set to automatically put my photos on the, into, into the cloud um, so that I can access it on any device. So that's one thing for photos. Um, another tool for just grabbing stuff, it's also built into Google Docs, is Google Keep. And I have not played with this a lot, but people really love it. And let me show you what that looks like. And um, there are a couple of different things you do. You can make checklists, you know, like um, and you can do certain things with them. You can change the colors and you can add images. Now, I don't know why you would want to do that, but you could do that. Um, oh, I guess you could, it's kind of like Pinterest in that way, a little bit. Um, so there's my little thing. And you can, you can drag and drop and reorganize them. So checklists, a note with image, or a note with drawing. Ooh, that's kind of fun. Ooh. Um, and that, you know, like first graders could draw something, right? Um, anyway, so there's a lot of things you can do with Google Keep. And, and because it has the integration with other Google tools, um, it's useful. There are, they don't call them labels here, they call them, uh, or tags, they call them labels. So I could um, make a new label for stuff that I want to be in, you know, labeled first grade, and I think I can drag and drop it, or um, see if I can add label to it here. And I can, I can categorize things as I need them. So that's one option of organizing and bookmarking and taking notes and and with Google um, and I these pictures were people that I was using uh, I was doing some sort of program and I googled their pictures and um, had them kind of in, in on the side in Google Docs and it, it actually they were they were also in here too the other thing that's kind of cool I just noticed is you can put a reminder in here to work with your Google Calendar. So that's pretty cool. And again, look, there's a search capability here. So I can search by people, by books, by travel. Where These are some travel. I don't know why, that, why those come up as travel. Um, there's a lot you can do in here. And I have not played around with this, and I should um, a little bit more. 
So that's one option for um, doing things too. Now, um, if I'm on a website like this in Chrome and I type in Command D on my computer, I can add a bookmark uh, to my Google Bookmarks. This is not a widely used feature, I think, in Google stuff in general. But if you bookmark stuff to Google, uh, to Google Bookmarks on Chrome here, and you log into your computer at work uh, into your Google stuff, it's going to be there. So you're not bookmarking it to, to Safari or Internet Explorer that's not web-based. Um, you're bookmarking it to Chrome, and, they, and, they, and Chrome syncs between whatever computer you're using when you're logged into your Google account. So I can, I can um, you know, put this in a new folder. I don't, I don't um, I can drag it. It's in my bookmark. It's in my bookmarks bar. I don't really want it there. I don't know if I can put it anywhere else. Anyway, um, I can save it, and then my bookmarks bar is here. I don't really like leaving stuff in my bookmarks bar. It just doesn't, and here's, here's other stuff here. It just is messy. It's too much stuff. Uh, I bookmark too much stuff, so Google Bookmarks is, isn't a good option for me. But if there are a couple things that you use all the time, uh, you might want to you might want to book stuff to your bookmarks bar. For first graders, you might want to bookmark stuff here that they like that you want them to get to easily because there'll be total spazzes probably in typing in links. So um, at first, at least. So uh, you know that's one option to think about, about from a management perspective. Um, so Google bookmarks are, are not, it's not that great. There's a better bookmarking situation out there. I'll tell you about it in a minute. Uh, Evernote is my, one of my favorites and it, it's web-based or it can be, there's an application that you can install on your computer or, and I think it's free for the most part. I pay for, an, for a premium version, but which gives me more space. Um, and I'm going to log in because I'm already, I have an account. So it looks a little different on, on the web, and it looks a little different on my computer. So I'm signing into the web version of this. Oh, come on. And it also works really uh, well with, um, on your phone. Too. And so anything that you do on your phone with Evernote, your, your main Evernote account will be updated with it. So this is what it looks like when it's um, on a website. And you can see things that I've bookmarked here uh, that I want. I organize stuff for different clients I have and different people I work with. So these are articles that I bookmarked for future reference and I share those notebooks with my clients and they can go in there and look at the stuff. So um, you, can, you can add a new note manually and just type in there. You can also like, like notes for class and that sort of thing. Uh, you can search, it searches text um, and it searches like if you clip a no newspaper article and you put it in here, it searches the text in the newspaper article. It's unbelievable. Um, and I organize everything into notebooks. So I have receipts in here. It's kind of like Google Drive, but not quite. Um, and then like, so you can see that I have lots of different ones, but here like Edmodo is one of my clients for, I do their social media. So this is stuff that I've saved for them. And how do I do that? I, I could do it manually, but it would be, I could go click on the plus sign and you know, type something in, but that would be a pain. It, does, it doesn't save me any time. If I have an article that I want to save for them, I go to the article and I have an extension that's called, it's an Evernote extension from the Chrome Web Store, and it looks like a little elephant. And I can clip this article, and this is where it gets to be really cool. I can clip the whole article, a simplified article, which takes away all the advertising and mumbo jumbo, the whole page, a bookmark, or a screenshot of the website. 
And um, so let's say I want to take a picture of, you know, a screenshot of just this. I don't know why I would do that for this particular thing, but I could. And then I could save it to whatever notebook I wanted. I can actually annotate that screenshot too. So I can like, um, you know, draw an arrow on here. Um, in Evernote, and this, get, this is probably getting a little hairy for you. Uh, it does, it's like the Swiss knife of, 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 of tools, of digital tools. I can also add tags to it. So I can say, um, you know, assessment. And it will make it easier for me to search and define and to sort things in my main Evernote account if I do that. So, um, you know, I can save it. And then I can go to my, uh, this is my, uh, I just happen to have the, um, this is the application that's installed on my computer, which is a little bit different than the website. Uh, it looks the same, but it's not quite the same. So I just put something in a folder called global. Let's see if it's in there. Global resources. You can see I'm kind of, I've, I've been busy with this stuff. So here's my global resources folder. Uh, and I don't see where I just clipped to it. But you know what? It may need to sync. There it is. And there's the, the screenshot that I took there. You don't need to use the website and the app that I'm using. I just happen to have them. I just, I'm showing you both to see, to show you how it looks a little bit different. Uh, the, the app has a little bit, it doesn't look like it has anything different if you ask me. Um, it used to take advantage of my webcam and I don't see that feature anymore. But maybe I'm missing it. It's a really, really cool tool. And so you can just grab stuff, take screenshots, get ideas, and you save it in here. You can shave, you can save these or, or share these notebooks with other people too, and they can contribute to them as well. So that's another option that's out there. It's, it's um, I don't know if it's for everybody, but I like, I use a variety of different tools. The other tool I wanted to show you that I use all the time is Digo. And this is, you know, 10 years ago when I started bookmarking stuff, this was one of the tools and another one was called Delicious that was made by uh, Yahoo put it together. And I think Delicious is, if it's not gone, it's made close to gone because Yahoo's not doing that well. Um, but but digo has been along for a long time. There's a free version and there's a premium version that lets you to do more things with it. And so I have bookmarked thousands of links over the years and um i've done some really crazy some pretty sophisticated things here everything is tagged with a keyword that i've added into it so if i tag something first grade for instance it would pop up here um sometimes you don't have to search for um you know you could type in first grade and search um the full text for the words first grade and see what comes up there. So if I found something on the internet, so here it's not helpful, it's just looking for everything called first. So what I would do is, this is an example of how to search well. I would do first grade together with quotes around it. Um, still doesn't look like it's searched very well on that one. Anyway, um, so you can search full text or by tags. You can sort by tags, like if I click on iPad, it's gonna bring up all my iPad links. And you can see when I bookmarked it and I can share it. There are also these lists called outliners that you can make and you can share them or keep them private. So here's a list of YouTube channels that I use in workshops. We'll use it probably when I talk about YouTube in a couple weeks. Um, you can make, you can create groups where uh, people around a topic or a department can bookmark together. These are some public groups that I belong to. So, and I don't know how often people are using these anymore. Um, I think there are other tools that people are using. I, I'm not sure if this is the most modern way, but I find it to be useful. Um, and then there's some other tools and advanced things that you can do with Digo. Um, the tools, here's the Chrome extension. This is a Digo let that you can put in in all different browsers. There's an app for curating. Um, so they have some other tools and other kind of advanced things that you can do with it down here. Now, what happens is if I go to, um, I'm gonna go to weareteachers.com. They have lots of good stuff too. 
And let's say I find something that I want to save to my Digo bookmarks for future uh, um, reference. I can click on here, oh, three teacher hacks to make the end of the school year easier. That's something that I need, that I'd like to save, you know, for every year. I have a bookmarklet, or not a bookmarklet, a, an extension, looks like that D there. And I can, very similar to, um, let me see if I can zoom out here a little bit. Very similar to, it's kind of stuck up on the top here, but you can kind of see it. Um, it's similar to uh, Evernote in that I can kind of clip it or annotate it uh, or take a screenshot and save it into Digo though. So I'm going to save this bookmark and this pops up and I can add a description if I want to. That takes too much time. But I can quickly add some um, tags that they suggest or that I've put in there. And I can save it to a list if I want to or to a group or just save it to my bookmarks. Now, if I don't want anybody to see it, because this is called social bookmarking, if people look at my account, they're gonna see my public links, I can make it private. I don't, I don't wanna make it private, because I think other teachers might find it beneficial. So then I'm gonna uncheck that and click on save. And when I go back to Digo, to my library, That should be at the top of my stuff. There it is, boom. So 12 seconds ago, I saved that. And then I can, I can do different things to it um, afterwards. But I, this is how I've saved everything that I've ever needed or ever wanted to go back to. Um, if I find something that's really, really good, I use the, the tag ex excellent. Like I, if I find something that I just think is so amazing that I have to remember it, I will tag it excellent, and then I can go back and find that thing that I thought was so amazing. These are like high quality, amazing things that I've, I've come across. You can also manually add links to things here too, I believe. Um, it looks like PDFs you can do. I have the paid for version of it, so some of these features may not be in there if you have the free version. So I use that, I use, and I use Evernote probably the most, and I've done that for a number of years. Other people um, like, um, we, gotta, we gotta wrap up in a second, really like live binders. And you can organize things in different binders here, like here's a future ready librarians binder. Um, and you can make tabs and put links in here. People really love this. Um, if I were collaborating with other first grade teachers, I would make a live binder probably, something like that. I, I've not used it as much as the other ones, um, but those are some other curation tools. Other ones that are popular too for, for kind of curating are Symbaloo, which I think I misspelled, I think the only, only one L. Obviously Pinterest is really popular with teachers. Uh, Flipboard is another one. But I wanna say, you know, Evernote, Digo, Digo, Live Binders, and Google Keep are probably the four best bets. Um, and this is something that maybe we should do another webinar on because we're at the end of this, but I wanted to spend a minute or two talking about favorite content sites. Um, Ashley, are there any sites that you found in your years of teaching and working in schools that like are your go-to sites for finding great stuff that you might curate for future lessons? I'm thinking. Yeah. I use e Edutopia. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we Are Teachers, I just showed you that one. That was a, a good one I liked. Um, um, I'm trying to think for little people. We Are Teachers has tons of stuff. Um, you know, obviously teachers pay teachers, people like that. Um, some of it's free, some of it's not. Uh, I, there's a blog that I like called Mind Shift. There's another site that does a lot of ed tech stuff that I like called Ed Surge. So I mean, like, so what I was, what I would had hoped to do, and I am going over time a little bit here, is is kind of brainstorm some of these favorite content sites. So that if you happen to be looking at them, then you might want to take one of the tools that you've chosen to use for curation and save stuff so that it's ready to go for the next school year or whatever you're planning. Um, that was kind of the point of that. And we can, we can 
we can keep talking about what are great sites for content in, in all the webinars that we're doing um, in the future. It's, there's a lot out there and we could spend like a whole webinar just talking about cool stuff. So um, your homework, and this is just a theoretical piece of homework, is to find a tool and play with it and report back next week if you want to on how it went for you. Um, any questions or anything, Ashley? No, I'm not yet, Lucy. I'm taking it all in. Thinking about the next steps here. Thinking about how to incorporate it. It's a lot to take in, and um, I tend to be a little overwhelming. So I, I hope that I, I hope get it. Clear. Okay, good. Yeah, so you made it. You made it relatable and also usable. Okay. So I appreciate that. Okay, great, awesome. So pick a tool and let me know next week if you come back, and um, I'd be curious to see what what you what worked for you personally. Um, next week is going to be kind of fun because we're going to talk about um, formative assessment and, and play around with some tools that, um, that, will, that will help you assess where you know, kids learning. Um, one of them, I'm sure you probably have played, everybody's played it, and it seems like, is Kahoot. Have you ever used Kahoot? Yes. Yes. Okay. So that, that kind of thing. We're going to be playing with tools like that to see what might work with our kids and, mm. um, and that sort of thing. That's a, always a really popular topic. Um, and then this is the rest of our schedule. We're meeting just about every week throughout the summer. I think, you know, there's a little bit of a gap at the end of June. You know, in July, we kind of space things out. But between now and the end of June, we're, we're going um, full tilt. So if you miss anything, uh, make sure to go to our Google Classroom, which is classroom.google.com. And... Did you get in? Did you get in there, Ashley? No, I've been following your webinar. I haven't gone on the other websites. Okay, so this is. I'll give you. So do you, you have the information? You have the slides, right? Do you have the slides? Is that bit.ly slash tech talk for slides? Yes. Let me put. Let me put that mix up. Yep. So if you go in there, it has the directions to get in the Google Classroom. This is what it looks like, and in each of these sections, you'll find the slides, the recordings, and extra resources that I've put together Perfect. For, for the first uh, four or five sessions. Um, so that's where everything will be. All right. Sounds good, Lucy. Thank you so much for coming, Ashley. And Absolutely. Have a good okay. I appreciate yeah. your work. Thank you. Yeah, it's good. It's nice to have. I'm happy with the audience of one. It's great. It's awesome. <laughs> All right. Very cool. Thanks again. Right, have a good night. Thanks. You too.